What is going on guys? Monk7 Mad here today with a brand new tutorial and this is to help with the basics of the new YouTube animated banners that can now be applied to your channel. In this video I'm going to show you some tips, some tricks, what you can and can't do and just the overall basic steps to make a very very simple animation. So let's have a look at what we can do. So we've got our logo and at the moment without any motion it's quite plain really it's plain anyway uh, by purpose but let's say we wanted to start off without our logo on the scene let's say you wanted it to appear so you can do things like positional movements so you can move an actual position along the X Y and Z axis you just can't rotate it without flattening the layer first you also can turn the opacity up and down but one of the things that you've got to also know is simply that you can modify any shape provided that you do it in layer frames and I'll show you that in a moment but first of all let's just do some simple movements so okay so we've got a frame at the starting point if we go down here to the timeline and we click this new button which is very very similar in fact identical almost to the new layer uh, we create a new layer here on the timeline, so we've got frame 1 and frame 2, and at the moment there is no difference. But on frame 2, if we were to move this to where we want the finish point to be, so let's say there, if we now check between frame 1 and 2, you can see now that the image itself moves. Now, if we were to play this back at the moment, it would be pretty horrible, because it would just sort of blink and there will be some sort of epilepsy warning everywhere. And I'm not going to do that, so we're going to need to make that a much smoother transition. Now there are two ways of doing this. You can, one, manually do it by dragging it, clicking a new frame, dragging it, which, you know, there's no problem with that at all. It's just slightly more lengthy. Alternatively, you can highlight both your frames. Go down here to this, like, almost like a motion tennis ball, and this is called a tween. And if you click on that, you're telling Photoshop to generate some frames between point one and two here that fill the gap. So if we were to put in ten frames, so that's ten frames between point one and point two, or in addition to. So now it's added ten more frames, and you can see along the time right here now we have twelve frames, whereas originally we had two. Okay, so now we've got that you can see that the actual animation is much smoother now than before when we only had the two frames so I mean ideally you might want to use more frames something around 30 would be a much smoother transition but the only thing then you have to realize is each frame it takes a certain amount of time to move to the next frame and at the bottom here we can see several things we can see where it says zero sec which is an indicator that there is no delay between frame one and two two to three so on and so on uh, and there's also a counter how many times the actual animation will loop and just leave that forever. If you wanted to for other purposes such as a web banner or something like that, maybe you only want to, want to repeat it three times. Maybe you want to custom it yourself. Maybe you want it five times, three times, four, I don't know. You can change that within the other tab. Now, the only problem now that we've made these frames is that if we want to change something like opacity, we'd have to go through each one of these sort of properties to do it. So we might need to go to frame one and let's say we want to fade it in so we turn the opacity down to zero and then we'd have to basically update it because you can see here as I'm bouncing through the frames the positioning is recognizing that the shape has been set to move throughout these frames but the opacity that we set in frame one has copied across and I said, well, if you want to make any more changes, now you'll have to do it yourself. So if we wanted to go to frame, I don't know, let's say 10. If we change the opacity up. Now, each of these frames leading up to 10 are blank. But when we reach 10, it appears. So you might need to customize this. So it might be, I don't know, this one's 90. That's 80 and so on. So now that we've customized that it will fade on but the only problem is you know if you've got a lot of frames, 30 frames, whatever, that can be quite a lot of hassle. 
So, let, I don't know this just yet, so we're going to find out together whether we can keep opacity between 2 and tween it. I think you probably can, I don't see a reason why not. So as, bef as we did before, we got the two frames, the start and the end frame. And on the end frame, we're going to move the position back to where we want it. So we've, we're going to keep some motion. And we've got the opacity change, so let's highlight these between 10 frames in the middle and yes it has it's automatically changed the opacity for us which is great so that's one way of doing it so you can tween things together uh, if you're gonna do that though make sure that you tweak the opacity at the start or you can you can manually do it but it, ju it will just take more time alternatively you don't need any motion you could just have the opacity in the middle like a little blink almost like it just sort of fades in fades out fades in fade out because no matter how many times that repeats that'll just keep a nice smooth uh, playback now if this is going to play through it's quite speedy to restart it's not really that smooth so if we go to the end frame which is zero sec let's just put a delay of a second or two on there and maybe at the start we can put half a second delay there so we've got a second and a half delay between it starting and it finishing. So it'll play, it'll wait, and then it'll do it. You can delay this for longer, you can have it for three seconds, five seconds. There's another option, so you can specify specific things if you only want it to be 2.27 of a second. Then you can do that. There's quite a lot of flexibility, but it's also quite hard to get your head around how to do some of it. So I'm hoping that this sort of video is gonna help so now that we've got that sort of animated maybe we want to change it maybe we don't want it to be like a fade in thing maybe we actually want it to just simply get cut in or something like that or like a paint splat in almost so how are you gonna about gonna go about doing this well the main way of doing it is to get the logo or text whatever you have make sure it's rasterized so in this case it's the logo my logo and I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to turn the bottom layer off so that bottom layer has nothing wrong with it at all now on the the layer we just duplicated I'm going to get my eraser maybe a paint splat tool and make sure the opacity is up have it quite a mediumly small brush and I'm going to just chop that bit off now I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to turn the bottom layer off so we're always working up and again I'm going to chop a bit off there and duplicate that turn the bottom one off chop duplicate turn the bottom one off chop and you just repeat that process over and over again until there's nothing left at all I mean, alternatively, you can do this with any shape. You can do it with a rectangle. You can cut it. Um, I mean, it's it's completely up to you. The great thing about this is that you can actually animate this because the way that the actual program works, oops, the way that the actual program works is you can also control things directly from the frame manager. So we can have all these frames running sequentially in there. And I'll show you why. So let me just quickly remove all that. So there's nothing left. And you leave that layer blank as well. Don't try and add anything to it. Just leave it blank. Now, in the Timeline Manager, we have... Well, actually, if, a better way to describe it is if we go File, Import, and it says Video Frames to Layers. And what that'll do is that'll convert videos, any video, into layers. Now, the way that this works is that you've got your timeline here and you've got your layer. Now, whatever is visible in this section, when you have this frame or the next frame open, it almost snapshots that, keeps it on the page. So when we were doing the motion, we only had the one object. So we were just telling the system to update every time we moved it. This time we're going to be telling it 
to change the opacity, uh, not the opacity, sorry, sorry, the visibility of each layer. So, on the first frame, there's nothing, so that's going to be frame 10. If I create a new frame, and I turn this layer off, but I turn the next one on, if we look between the two frames now, you can see, especially when you look here on the right hand side, so this is first frame, this is second frame. You can see that the visibility manually switched. And if I create a new frame again, then I turn that one off, turn the next one on. And because we've been duplicating it and cutting it, it adds more and more to the piece each time. And it's just remembering to turn the top layer off, turn the bottom one on, until you get to the end of your animation. And then, voila. So, if we were to play this back, first of all, I'm going to just change the delay on all of these to 0.2 seconds. And play this back in a second. And what we should see. is it like fills in and as I mentioned earlier on about controlling the delay between each frame the last one maybe we want two seconds so the animation plays it'll wait and then it'll replay one thing you could do if you wanted not saying you have to but you, as I said you could reverse this so you could in essence make a new frame and then go back up the scale to almost like retract what you've done. So if we just we'll leave that one in the middle at two and we'll just turn these all back. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna see the playback of it first painting the objects on and then it's going to wait for two seconds and then we're going to get it to undo itself so you can paint objects on and off and because we've taken it off and it gets painted on at the start it's a much smoother animation and the good thing about this is that because it's always in the center and getting painted it's always going to be in the person's eye. Of course you can control the time playback etc um, but you know that's quite cool and you can do that with multiple things at once it doesn't just have to be one logo you can go quite complex with this sort of stuff uh, you can change background colors you can change images you, you can change color um, you know it's, it's all quite nice to experiment with it's just trying to get your head around some of the things you can do so I'm gonna attempt in the next few videos that I'm going to do to create some more animated banners and show you how to make them better, better and better. Um, but that is going to be it. I'll put this file in the description for experimentation's sake. Um, but I think that is going to be about it. So thank you for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Uh, have fun with the new animated banner. Uh, don't forget the downloads in the description. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you around. Take care.